Trenton, what are you doing? I want to do a quick game of Guess the Art Pose. Okay. All right, first up, this. Well, probably not Home Alone, so I'm going to guess The Scream by Edvard Munch. Nailed it. Okay, how about this one? Uh, I think that's The Thinker. It sure is. Okay, okay. How about this? And here's a hint. I'm on a river. Hmm, I'm not sure. Really? Nothing? Nope. Does Washington crossing the Delaware ring any bells? I'm not getting it. That's okay. Let me tell you all about it. Three versions of Washington crossing the Delaware were painted by the artist Emanuel Leutze in 1851 in Dusseldorf, Germany. The first was destroyed during World War II. The second is currently the centerpiece of the American wing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City at a whopping 12 and a half by 21 and a quarter feet in size. The third is substantially smaller at three feet high and six feet long, which spent several decades in the White House from 1970s up until 2014. It is now up for auction at Christie's and expected to go for around $20 million. The artist Loitza, who immigrated to America, was very against slavery and made a point to incorporate the different melting pot features of America into the painting, including a black soldier and Native American symbols. The painting itself depicts George Washington leading the troops during a key moment of the American Revolution. All right, I know about George Washington being the first president, but I don't think I knew he was in the Revolutionary War. Hmm. Well, you know the American Revolutionary War was the war for independence from Britain, right? Yes. Well, luckily for us, we've got our resident history buff Oscar to fill us in on the American Revolution. Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Next Gen History. Today we're going to take a brief tour of how the United States of America came to be. The U.S. is only around 250 years old, which might seem like a long time, but when you think about the fact that the dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago, or that China has over 4,000 years of recorded history, the U.S. as we know it today is basically a middle schooler. The Revolutionary War is the story of the United States starting their own independent country. When the European explorers began landing in the Americas, the Spanish settled in the south and west, the French primarily in the north, and the British settled on the eastern coast. The British left their country for a variety of reasons including business opportunities, food and research shortages, and religious reasons. One of those famous groups were the Pilgrims, who left Europe to escape religious persecution and landed at Plymouth Rock. These Pilgrims were granted a charter from the King of England to establish colonies in America. The English crown granted more charters and land settlements formed down the East Coast. These were known as the 13 original colonies, British colonies to be exact. These colonies were Connecticut, Delaware, Georgia, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and South Carolina. The causes leading up to the Revolutionary War were sort of a building block situation. First, the British were in massive debt from the French-Indian War, so they began to heavily tax the colonists to help pay their bills. The Stamp Act was a tax on all documents. The Townsend Acts were taxes on all important goods to America and were later lifted. Then the Tea Act. This act allowed only a British company called the East India Company to sell its tea legally in America. And that disrupted all kinds of business. All of these acts passed by the British really ticked off the colonists, and they began to protest not having the same rights or representation in the British government, called Parliament. This building anger led to violence in 1770, when a British soldier opened fire on the protesters and five people ended up dying. This was known as the Boston Massacre. Tensions continued to rise between Britain and the American colonists as a result of the Tea Act. This led to colonists disguising themselves, boarding British ships in the port delivering tea, and then dumping the tea into the harbor. 
this you may have heard of as the Boston Tea Party. Maybe not what I pictured for a tea party, but anyways. As punishment for the Tea Party, Britain came up with the Intolerable Acts, which, limited governing in Massachusetts, closed the ports in Boston until the damages from the Tea Party were paid, made British officials exempt from criminal proceedings, and forced all residents to house British soldiers at any time without notice. That was sorta the last straw. Colonial delegates began to meet in response to these harsh acts. They rejected taxation without representation, as well as taking care of the British army in the colonies without their permission. They issued a declaration of rights to every citizen, including life, liberty, property, assembly, and trial by jury. This was discussed at the First Continental Congress. They planned to meet again, but before they could, violence erupted. On the night of April 18, 1775, British troops marched from Boston to nearby Concord, Massachusetts in order to steal weapons. Paul Revere and other writers sounded the alarm that the Redcoats were coming! Redcoats being the British. And this allowed colonists to form some militia units, aka everyday citizens taking up arms to retaliate against the British invasion. On April 19th, local militia men clashed with British soldiers in the battles of Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts, marking the shot heard around the world that signified the start of the Revolutionary War. The Second Continental Congress formed the Continental Army, and George Washington was made Commander-in-Chief. By 1776, General Washington had led many battles against the British and the Revolutionary War was in full effect. At this point, a majority of American colonists were in favor of independence from British rule, and a declaration of independence was made. This document declared that men deserve the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that Britain was interfering with these rights. So the colonists basically said, so long, we want to be independent. This declaration was signed on July 4th, 1776. You know, July 4th, Independence Day. Well, if you don't know, now you know. The struggle was real, as the British forces seemed to be winning, but the newly declared nation did not back down. Washington led a surprise attack on Christmas night 1776, leading his troops across the Delaware River in a surprise attack, winning a victory that restored the hope of the rebel colonists. This was known as the Battle of Trenton. <laughs> hey, Trenton! It was also where the inspiration for the painting comes from that Trenton was talking about. The Battle of Saratoga is when things really start to turn around for the colonists, and an American battle victory prompted France to enter and help Americans. Although, rumor has it they had been secretly aiding for a while. So, from 1778 to 1781, there was a long back and forth of stalemates, meaning not much progress was made on either side. Like if you were stuck in a maze that was a circle and just kept ending in the same place with no real end in sight. However, at the Battle of Yorktown on October 19, 1781, the British finally surrendered to General Washington's forces and their French allies, and this was considered the last major battle. However, it wasn't until late 1782 when the British finally removed their troops, ending the conflict. Great Britain formally recognized the independence of the United States in the Treaty of Paris in 1783 after eight long years of war. This is how the 13 colonies won their independence from Britain and became the United States of America. The Constitution or official governing document was then written in 1787, ratified in 1788, and in operation since 1789. 
So, next 4th of July, when you're eating your hot dog. Did someone say hot dogs? And watching fireworks? It's because the colonies won their independence from Britain. That's all for today, friends. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Next Gen History.